G'day, my name is Derek. Welcome to Custom Craft and Adventure. Uh, I want to show you something. This is a DIY bender, sheet metal bender. And unfortunately, it's been giving me a bit of grief. Uh, and why? Because it is not bending sheet metal. Any thickness of sheet metal. And I wonder why. And I'm, uh, look, I'm about to find that out today. Uh, hopefully, I can fix it. To, uh, to, to know how I got this far uh, in the past few days, get yourself comfortable, get yourself something to drink, uh, and enjoy this episode. Are you listening? Damn. So uh, today I'm going to build a sheet metal bender. I've never built one before. I'm going to give it a go. But uh, I went online and have a look at Google. Uh, essentially, a sheet metal bender uh, is a very simple device. Uh, it contains three components. Very important. Uh, it needs a die that goes on top of the sheet metal. Uh, it also needs a straight edge below the die, so uh, the uh, the sheet metal gets sandwiched between the die and the straight edge, uh, so the sheet metal is not moving anywhere. And also the third piece is the the piece that actually folds up uh, with a hinge, so the sheet metal will be folded up together with that piece. Uh, it could be as simple as, oh, I've got some stuff and I've got a couple of clamps. Uh, just clamp down the die, uh, sandwich the sheet metal between the straight edge and the die, and you find some ways to bend it. Uh, if, you only, if you are only going to bend one piece of sheet metal, that will be the way to do so. But if you are going to do repetitive bending, um, if you want something to to, to bend sheet metal very conveniently, you may want to consider the following things. A couple of springs that goes with the die. So the die goes on top of, of a sheet metal uh, as, as, as long as you sort of release the, uh, the tension, the die goes back up uh, by itself. And then you can slide the sheet metal through between the die and the straight edge. Uh, and to do so, obviously, you will need some sort of uh, I'd say is a bolt that goes through the spring uh, and allows the spring to move in the right track. Uh, so to, to make that happen, it requires a fair bit of fabrication. Uh, and also the bender will have to sit securely um, on a structure. Uh, one thing is worth mentioning as well is that, um, yes, I mentioned about three pieces, the die, the straight edge, as well as the, the one that folds up. Uh, but if you have a perfect um, surface, uh, you can actually just go by the die and the fold up piece. Because if the surface is already straight, that, that can be used as a straight edge. And the other thing that is really important is the hinge. You will need a couple of hinges to operate the fold-up bit. Uh, but the hinge, very tricky, uh, it needs to stay somewhere in here instead of going up there. It has to stay in the axis of movement. Uh, and that way, you can sort of guarantee the fold is the sharpest, if you, if you, if you know what I mean. Oh, um, if I can show you how I build this, all of this will make sense. So now I'm just going to cut some steel. Uh, I'll, I'll prepare all the pieces that I need and I'll get back to video recording. All right, everyone, uh, I've just done the first step of the bender. So the moving bit of a bender. So that's the moving bit. I've got to cut out this much in order to fit this in. Uh, I'll show you in a different camera angle. All right, so, um, the hinge fits in like so, and as you can see, I've dotted the center of the circle using a white, um, I think it's a paint, uh, and it, the, the corner sits with the, 
uh, that thing anyway. So I can ensure the hinge moves in the right way. I'm not too sure how to explain that, but uh, once everything is completed, uh, the whole thing will make sense. Uh, I'll just quickly going to show you as well. Uh, since this is too big, it's a little bit hard, but so that, that's been tack welded on the corner uh, where I've cut out the li little piece. Uh, so I've just marked another piece in here that needs to be cut out as well because that's going to go uh, below that. Uh, and I'll show you when, when it is done. Let me show you what I've done so far. Uh, it's a little bit tricky at the moment because I mean these are around two meters long and they are quite heavy and I'm just holding them at the moment by using my thigh. Uh, so I'm not too sure if you can see it. That's the thigh. Uh, that's the folding bit. And if you can see on the side here, uh, you can see three pieces. Uh, that's the folding, that's the move, moving bit. That's the folding uh, with the hinge. And that's a straight edge at the bottom. That's a die, and the die is right at the edge of three things. And that's how that works. And when you put a piece of sheet metal somewhere in the middle, uh, you move this moving bit, and the whole thing just folds up. All right, I'll get back to work. And then the next thing, obviously, is to put this up uh, in a secure spot. I'll have to cut out a, uh, a few pieces of steel using whatever I've got left uh, and put maybe weld a couple of bolts in there because I haven't got a threaded drill bit um, so I can run a couple of bolts through Alright, so this is what I've made uh, so far. Uh, that flat piece, that folding bit, I haven't really even touched the, um, the die yet, uh, but that's the mounting piece. I've put a flat bar at the back uh, and a flat bar in the front attached to the, um, uh, the, uh, the, the straight edge. Uh, so that goes with this, and once I've put on the table, uh, I've got a couple of bolts that holds it. 
Uh, it's not really just nuts and bolts. I've actually made it make the nuts captive. Uh, so I've weld at the back, although they're not really that nice because it's a little bit hard to reach. But that will that will hold at the moment. It's really sturdy. Um, so I'll be making the hinge on this note next. That before, I've noticed a problem uh, before I actually weld the hinge in uh, it's probably a better idea to to deal with the die first uh, so to, to in order to put this die in I, I have to make a track mechanism um, so over here I'll have to put a hole on this flat edge this flat surface and line the hole line up the hole with this nut you can see it uh, and that nut and the hole allows the bolt to go through freely uh, and by the way this nut is going the thread of this nut has to be smoothened uh, to allow this bolt to go through freely this bolt obviously is too long I have to cut it to a suitable size uh, and weld into the hole at the, at the flat edge uh, and then I'll put this spring to allow the rebound effect. Um, so this is what I'm going to work on now. Let's see what happens. I'm sure it will work fine. So we are now working on the die. So die is a very important part of the bending process because uh, you need to have an accurate die to bend things really nicely. Now, uh, something that I haven't recorded uh, earlier, I've ground the die. So the edge of the die, uh, the, the edge of the die is really smooth allow a really smooth uh, smooth effect when you bend sheet metal and these two sides are actually a little bit different that size is for a, a bigger radius so uh, if you can have a look on the side I'm not sure if you can see it um, this is smoother it's more suitable for thicker piece of sheet metal that side is a bit sharper if you know what I mean uh, that is suitable for thinner piece of sheet so I'm trying to make some fingers on the side and, and you may also ask why do I not make fingers in the middle uh, and that's simply because I'm lazy I, I hate using a free uh, using a drill and, and, and drill it freehand uh, I really want to use a drill press to save a bit of energy um, so that is the capacity of the device in the drill press and that's what I want to do now After spending heaps and heaps of time cutting, I finally end up a die like this. Uh, so as you can see, this is what I call fingers. When you are bending 3D structure, uh, the 3D part gets inserted in there. But the only limitation is that it only has a capacity of this much, if you know what I mean. Um, in the previous video, I said I had to drill uh, the angle line first before I use a bend saw to cut. Uh, and I thought, why, why was I so stupid? Uh, the next day, that is today, 
uh, I came up with an idea that is not as nice, obviously, but <clears throat> I remember the fact that I've got a cold cut circular saw. So what I did in the middle, I just used the cold cut circular saw and basically ran through it a couple of times uh, so the fingers are, the uh, finger gaps are wide enough to insert uh, maybe two and a half mil uh, of a sheet in there. That's obviously bigger than two and a half mil, but it, it ensures uh, the thickness of sheet metal that can, can be inserted in there. Uh, I'll just use a different camera angle and, and let you have a look at the die at the moment. All right, just let you have a look. So these were the ones that I've used a bend saw to cut. They are very nice and clean. Uh, and these are the ones that I've used uh, cold cutting circular saw and they are not too bad, they're still clean um, but the process was a little bit more tiring but it's faster to be honest with you so that's what I've made so far um, and I've also deliberately made uh, space some of the fingers bigger and some smaller fingers and that's to, uh, that's to allow me flexibility to obviously uh, allow different uh, width of a band uh, and I'll show you if I can demonstrate later to you how that actually works that'll be fantastic all right um, so the die is made essentially but there is a bit of a problem because all these cuts they allow me to cut 3d structure uh, but the problem is is made the die more flexible now because I've essentially weakened the die so what I'll be doing I'll have to uh, make something like this. You see a triangular structure. That is a tensioner mechanism for the die. Uh, and that is a threaded rod uh, with a thing in here. Uh, that is going to push down the die. So it, it doesn't only strengthen the die, but it also uh, add a bit of tension. When, you, when you're actually bending a piece, um, it adds tension on the die, so it sort of press down a little bit. And, that uh, tensioner is actually very important uh, for a for such a big bender like this. This is a two meter bender. So I uh, hopefully it works. I'm not too sure. I haven't done anything like this before, but fingers crossed. So now I'll be making uh, the tensioner, and after that, I guess I'll be spending time to strengthen these parts as well because they are obviously the weakest link of the whole bender. Right, so the uh, bending mechanism is done, uh, but a couple of problems. That hinge is a bit tight. Uh, probably after the, after the welding, it, the whole thing gets distorted and pushed back a little bit. Um, so what do I do? I'll just put more lubricants in the hinge, so make sure it moves smoothly. Uh, the other problem is um, here. The, uh, uh, the, the, this piece is a little bit too long and that's why it flexes. That's not desirable. I'll have to make some structure to strengthen it.
Guys, I'm beginning to know why there is a problem in any bending action. So, um, as you can see, I've already fixed this part. Uh, but before that, let me, let me tell you what actually went wrong earlier. So, first of all, I've got to emphasize this is a really, really long sheet metal bender. Uh, for something this long commercially <coughs> or industrially, you need to spend heaps and heaps of money to get something really decent, uh, you know, strong enough that uh, that is able to withstand any punishment. So the measurement is 2.3 meters. So it is able to bend anything capacity wise around two meters. Um, so definitely suitable for canopy uh, type sheet metal. Now, the, the problem is there were three problems. Number one, for, uh, firstly, the, um, the, the folding bit, uh, that is the movable part. Previously was this. I've taken it out because it's essentially too flimsy. If, if you recall any of that, that thing actually is only three mil. I didn't actually notice how thick that was. Uh, even with all these, you know, strengthening attachment, uh, the whole thing just lags and I, uh, I couldn't use any strength at all to bend any metal. Uh, we talk about half a mil of a steel, 1.5 mil aluminium. So it was a failure. So that's number, uh, problem number one. Problem number two was here. Uh, the die is five mil thick angle. Uh, essentially, it was strong enough until I have cut all these uh, slots in there. The third problem. That is here. You see, that angle is unsupported. So every time when I've tightened this couple, right, uh, coupler, um, it goes down and it starts going this way. Uh, no matter how tight you go, you, you go all the way tight uh, and the whole thing just went backwards that way. And that makes it, uh, makes the die over here no tension. So it doesn't really um, hold anything in this gap. So guys, you can see where the support has gone. So what I'm about to do is to add some support here and trying to make this as flush as possible with, with the surface. Um, and I'll probably add some weld over here and strengthen the whole structure and I don't know how to strengthen the inside, probably put some, some something that is 90 degree in a range uh, against whatever that I'm going to put on. Probably some, some sort of angle line, uh, just put it there like so. Uh, so just essentially just to, to lengthen this width a little bit so the, um, the die angle line can sit properly on there uh, and I can properly add some tension on it without twisting the whole die. Um, so I'm going to cut some steel and going to take uh, and, and also weld onto it. Hey.
All right, that's the end of this build. Uh, I present to you a sheet metal bender. Uh, by the way, that's the die. That's the rest of the component. Uh, so I've addressed quite a few issues from my prototype. Uh, firstly, I've I've used a more convenient. Uh, it's actually a couple, but uh, I've used it as a knot to tension the whole die. Um, uh, a spring with higher spring rate, so uh, it doesn't sag theoretically. I've also added this surface, so the die can sit on properly on both ways. Um, 10 mil movable component, really sturdy, but it actually still flex with a 1.5 uh, millimeters sheet. Uh, what else have I done? Oh, here, very, 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 very useful. I've strengthened the bottom of this um, straight edge because the straight edge is actually a five mil angle and it actually flex down as I as I bend any sheet metal. So that is movable, so you can actually adjust to wherever you want to. And look at this weld; they are very nice, aren't they? After aluminium welding, when I get back to steel welding, it feels like a slow motion of everything. So it just makes everything so much easier. Anyway, uh, the die, I've strengthened the die as well. Uh, you see all the tensioners in here. That is to press this place down. Uh, all the tensioner does the same thing. Uh, all these cuts, the slots there, they are for bending things that's already been bent. So uh, uh, in, in later videos, I might be able to show you how to make a box section. Uh, we'll see what happens. Anyway, um, I'll, in the end of this video, I'll show you a few demonstrations about bending. Um, it is a device that I make myself, uh, and it's obviously not a professional device, and there are things that I need to get used to uh, in order to bend things properly but I assure you it bends okay. All right, as you can see, uh, this bender is a success. Uh, it bends stuff. Uh, and it's quite beautiful, honestly. I mean, look at this bend. It's not that sharp, but at least it's a uniform bend with a certain radius. Uh, and also, look at this. That is so nice, isn't it? I can't believe how nice this bender bends. Uh, but just a bit of afterthought uh, of building a tool like so. Uh, well, uh, as you can see, I've made several mistakes. I, um, I've used things that's too small. Um, and obviously, that's my biggest regret. Uh, I guess the, the, the biggest lesson I've learned from this tool building uh, is that you, when you build a tool, it's different from building a project. Uh, when you build a, a car, an auto, automotive project, you want to use as small as you can, but it's strong enough to hold your stuff. Um, and that is to keep the weight down. But look, when you're building a tool like this, uh, especially of this long, you really, really want to go crazy. Uh, so if I have to build a tool next time, I'll have to switch my concept from automotive a little bit, use stuff as big as I can, just go crazy. Uh, otherwise, you, you keep wasting time, you know? Um, you keep wasting time and, and uh, you, you never get there. But I'm so glad that finally this thing bends properly. Right, everyone, if you, uh, if you like this episode, if you've managed to pick up a few points, learn some from from what I've uh, <laughs> learned some from my mistake. Um, I'd like you to subscribe to my channel, uh, press like and notification, and I'll see you next time. I'll better get back to this build.